everyone. Welcome to our October meeting. Appreciate your attendance tonight. We'll call the meeting to order, and the first order of business will be the approval of the minutes for the September 13, 2016 regular council meeting and closed session minutes, and September 19, special council meeting. Make a motion to be approved. Second. Any discussion? Not all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Minutes stand approved. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Highway 321 Valley Boulevard construction update. Kip isn't with us, but Scott has some things to share with us about our own road projects. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, Council. We thought since Kip uh, was busy out there today and wasn't able to join us, we'd give a couple updates on some of the road projects that we have going on around town. Uh, Laurel Lane, adjacent to the Horse Show grounds, is back open, and work will be completed there tomorrow morning. Uh, where they will be backfilling the edges of the new asphalt. Uh, repair area number four on Laurel Lane between Meadow Lane and Cone Road will be back open tomorrow morning, and work will also be completed there with placing backfill on the asphalt edge. Thomas Construction will be moving to Cone Road tomorrow to start the Gabion Wall on repair number two. As a consequence, the Cone Road uh, will be shut down between the estate property and Highway 221 for approximately three weeks. We have a sign out at the 221 entrance to Cone Road, and we've also done a series of code red messages and called the residents along uh, that section of Cone Road to make sure they are aware. Church Street, where the culvert repair is taking place, will continue to be closed until Tuesday of next week. And ditch line work will continue on Valley View with one lane closed using a flagman. So those are some of the projects we have going on around town. Can you um, ask Kip about the sidewalk um, coming up South Main on the left by blowing rock furniture? What the timeline on that is? Okay, sure. <clears throat> Thanks, Scott. Also, we have the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution uh, resolution of support for their 50 years of service. Uh, I can read this if you'd like, but otherwise, I'd like you to. Okay. Yeah, yeah, approve it so I can go read it at their meeting tomorrow. Okay. Make a motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Second. Is there, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> consent agenda, Scott. Thank you, Mayor. This evening, Council, we have four items on your consent agenda. The first is a budget amendment to account for two donations that have been received, one for Memorial Park bench and another for police equipment. We have two tax releases and refunds. Both of those are due to NCDOT, owning property that they acquired in conjunction with the 321 project. Item number three is the Muscari annexation request for 156 Heather Ridge Lane. And this is a map showing the area of the property. Uh, this particular property has actually been in the corporate limits and has been paying Blowing Rock property taxes, uh, but because they are connecting to sewer, we thought this would be a good time to officially annex and, uh, and change the map so that the entire parcel is actually shown as within the corporate limits. Right now, the official corporate limit line is just behind the house, so this is a good opportunity to clean up uh, the property line map in terms of the corporate limits. The fourth item is the McIntosh annexation for 6236 Highway 321 South, and this is a, a map of that area um, just north of the Apsky Mountain Welcome Center. Uh, that property is, uh, is requesting to begin the annexation satellite annexation <coughs> process associated with that property. So, Mayor and Council, that completes uh, your consent agenda items for consideration this evening. Thank you, Scott. Much pleasure. Motion to approve. Consent agenda is presented. Okay. Motion and second. Discussion? Being none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, vote no. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay. Moving right along. Annexation for 1264 Green Hill Road. Good evening, Council Mayor. Ms. Jessica Bissett submitted a petition of voluntary annexation for Council consideration. 
observation of the September meeting, which initiated the annexation process. Tonight's public hearing is the second and final step of the voluntary annexation process. The closed is the annexation ordinance 2016-25, which includes a meets and bounds description of the property and specifics about utility connections and responsibilities. If approved as presented, the annexation will become effective October 31st, 2016. This boundary map would also be recorded with the Talk County Register of Deeds and the North Carolina Secretary of State. And a copy of this map will also be sent to the Talk County Board of Elections. This shows the subject property that was presented to you last month. Um, a sewer connection would be rather easy. There was a tap installed um, right on the edge of the property back when the Green Hill Road sewer was installed back in 2004 or 5, I believe. So it would be a rather simple connection. Um, they're already on water currently and uh, paying double rates. Of course, there's not houses knocked down. It's not there now, but they're going to, the new house that they construct, they would just uh, be fully within the town, would pay single, single water rates and sewer rates. And uh, this is the final step in the process. Thank you, Kevin. It's a pleasure. Do we need to hear from anybody? Anybody want to speak on that? motion we approve. Okay, is that a second? I, Albert moved it. Oh, second. You second? Okay. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Okay, discussion agenda. Resolution to support ground application for the Blowing Rock section of the Middle Fork Greenway. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, before Wendy begins, I'd like to provide a, a brief overview on, on this particular item. Uh, the town has had a strong history of working with the Middle Fork Greenway, uh, first through the director, Ann Browning, and now <coughs> through Wendy Pataperste, who is here to join us and provide council and the public with an update on the Middle Fork Greenway progress. Um, as you may remember, council initiated and was successful ultimately in applying for a federal lands access program grant uh, last year for funds to build a sidewalk from <coughs> Main Street out to Bass Lake. And during this rounds of processing through various meetings and discussion with staff and, and Wendy, uh, we thought we may actually have a shot at applying for Federal Lands Access Program Grant again, this time for the entire Section 1 of Middle Fork Greenway. So this evening, uh, staff has prepared a resolution uh, for council consideration, but before officially considering that, we thought it'd be a good time for Wendy to provide an update and give you some totals associated with the grant request. Wendy? Thank you, Scott. And thank you all so much for letting me be here tonight. I'm really excited. I'm four months in now, and I've learned so much. It has been fantastic working with the town of Blowing Rock, um, everyone from the chamber to the Rotary to Scott and Kevin have been fantastic and just provide so much expertise and support to the Middle Fork Greenway, so I really um, so tonight, I wanted to provide a, pr provide a brief update as well as um, explain a little bit about, about the E-flat grant and the application. So the flap, you might be familiar with the Bass Lake project. It's great because we are able to apply for it because it is providing access to federal lands right there at the Blue Ridge Parkway. So um, there's a limited pool that, of folks that can apply for it um, across the state of North Carolina, and there's $5 million available in the state round and the request they don't want anything less than seven hundred thousand dollars so we can handle that <laughs> um, so uh, this as you know is the middle fort greenway our six and a half mile overview um, from blowing rock all the way to boone and we're working with the town of boone and the hospital on that end and asu with the new health science building to 
then the Watauga County owns the dotted line beyond that. So we have approximately another mile that we'll be um, applying for grants this winter and spring with the county to extend that center section. So there's a lot of momentum and progress um, from down coming up. So looking at the Blowing Rock section, you all are probably very familiar with this area and this section if you've seen these maps before. Um, this grant will encompass this whole entire reach all the way from So the rehab center is going to be under an easement through the county. We're working on an MOU with the National Park Service to have access through their lands, and then a, an encroachment agreement for the DOT to go on the um, side of the highway. So the biggest and largest blessing ever has been this trailhead and what DOT has already provided. They've um, This trailhead um, parking area is under construction right now. Along with about 800 linear feet of, of sidewalk, plus a pedestrian crosswalk right there, and um, they're laying the pavers. It looks beautiful on the corner of Tanger right there. So that right there is just a huge instigation to, to continue moving forward. So we will, uh, this grant will go from the Roots Restaurant where it, that trail ends to um, through the Chestnut Ridge. So right there at um, the trailhead, we hope to put in some gateways. This is going to be the entrance of the Middle so having some gateways, maps, and pictures that demonstrate and show where the path goes and how far it will lead. It'll actually eventually, once it's all done, connect all the way to Brookshire Park on the other side of Boone. And so that's a lot of mileage that we can start right here. Um, so this is a schematic that shows the before and the after along the DOT right-of-way section. Um, so we'll be including guardrails and probably have to do some retaining walls with the rock blasting that I'll be alongside the highway. Um, but it'll be uh, eight foot wide, so it'll accommodate bikes and pedestrians at the same time. Um, this is another schematic. There's the water treatment facility, so you can see that the trail will kind of meander down beyond that and enter into the, the National Park Service land, which that area provides a wonderful resource for environmental education, and there's some really interesting natural resources through there that we can highlight um, alongside the trail. So really highlighting our, um, our beautiful wetlands and streams um, along that section. <coughs> so of course, this is the bridge that everyone may be familiar with, the famous bridge from the summer that we actually have funding from um, DOT for. It's approximately 90 feet long and it um, will cross over the middle fork and connect to the culvert that goes under the Blue Ridge Parkway. So that bridge, um, we have the money for that. So the, the request this evening is to complete the construction from Roots through Chestnut Ridge. Um, the number um, has gone up a little bit just because we're adding a 10% DOT fee that we had talked about a little bit. We added that to this last number. So um, we'll be submitting $2 million, just over $2 million, with a total cost of $2.5 million. And the requirement of the match is 20%. And the great news is, is that we either have that money pledged or in hand through these resources that are listed on this page here. So it's approximately $514,000 that will be the required match. And we do have that, so we can move forward with that match. And the Middle Fork Greenway is committed to providing that. Um, you may also uh, see about maintenance. Our ultimate goal is when the whole trail is constructed, that the county will provide leadership and maintenance when it's done. Right now, the section that is complete, we have agreements with the landowners that they maintain their sections, and then Middle Fork Greenway volunteers manage and volunteer at all of our pocket parks. And so for this section one, part of the grant is um, asking for what type of maintenance, and so we're happy to pursue sub-agreements and sub-maintenance agreements for section one um, if, if we need to. Um, and so I really am excited about this section. I think um, it will provide this huge catalyst to get the ball rolling and just keep on going all the way into, into the Boone area. So I appreciate you all very much for your continued support with, uh, with the Middle Fork Greenway. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Any questions? Have a great asset. Wendy, have you been able to get all the right away now uh, from Roots down to uh, Cheshire Grove? Right now, we've worked with the Blue Ridge Parkway National.
National Park Service to get an, um, uh, they have agreed to an MOU, um, it's not finalized yet, and then also working with DOT on an encroachment agreement to have the right of way through there worked on that as well. What's an MOU? Mem What's an MOU? Council, with the, the latest update of the numbers that Wendy mentioned, um, that would result in a slight adjustment to items three and four in the whereas statements in the clauses. Um, so anticipated construction costs of 2.6 million, um, and then the, um, the grant amount of 2.1 million, and then in the subsequent whereas uh, to raising the roughly $500,000 of non-federal funds. So, uh, part of the reason that the Middle Fork Greenway Association is asking the town to partner in this way is because a, a local government entity has to be the sponsoring or official applying partner. Do we hear a motion? Make a motion, we approve. Second. Any discussion? Being none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed vote no. Motion carries, thank you. Contract for engineering services, Scott. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is a, a result of a lot of work by a lot of people. Um, McGill and Associates has been the town's engineer of record for approximately the past 12 years and uh, sometimes in these types of comprehensive contracts, time flies when you're having fun and you come back and you realize, goodness, when was the last time we put that one out for bid? And we realized, oh goodness, it's been about a dozen years. So council directed at the uh, January retreat that staff go through a comprehensive uh, request for a proposal process to completely level the playing field just to assess the value of the dollar uh, that the town of Blowing Rock is putting forth into its engineering contracted services associated with this uh, comprehensive program that the town of Blowing Rock has especially now uh, with the 13 million dollars of general obligation bond project so uh, staff initiated that project uh, late this spring in terms of putting out the request for a proposal. The proposal uh, request was sent out to approximately 17 different firms, both in the high country uh, and off the mountain. We actually received four uh, responses to the request for proposals. Uh, two separate staff, uh, a staff team was put together to uh, review all four of those proposals independently and then came together to review those. Uh, using a scoring matrix as identified in the request for proposals. Additionally, two council members uh, independently reviewed all four proposals. Uh, the recommendation from both groups was to send three of those four proposals to the full council for ultimate consideration. Uh, as approved earlier in the minutes, the September 19th special council meeting uh, was a, a pretty involved special council meeting in which each firm came in and presented and discussed with council, uh, had about a half hour presentation and 45 minutes of Q&A associated with each of those firms. Uh, following that comprehensive process and wrapping up in the early evening, uh, council directed that staff move forward and develop a contract uh, with McGill and Associates uh, to move forward with a year, a three year term uh, suggested renewable uh, for another three years at the end of that period. Uh, so the item attached to the agenda represents the uh, comprehensive contract that has been developed associated with that council direction. Uh, new in this particular contract includes a comprehensive summary report that will be prepared on a monthly basis as well as a new task order report that will provide additional clarity for council and for staff, especially with all of the things going on uh, here in town. This will provide everybody a written record of where we are in the contract execution process and help us all keep it straight and the contract even contemplates those task orders becoming part of the contract itself on an ongoing basis. In addition, uh, Andy Lovingood of McGill and Associates uh, has said as part of the contract he would meet with the town manager on a quarterly or as needed basis to make sure things are going uh, according to plan and to address any shortcomings that might, be, uh, might have arisen 
as well as to move forward together. So Andy and uh, other representatives of McGillan Associates are here. If council has any questions or I'll be happy to try and address any questions council may have. I had a few. Um, one of the things we talked about was when um, project costs were underestimated. Um, what, what was our recourse for that? Did we need to redesign it at our cost or your cost? And I didn't see that in here. Mayor Council, it's good to see you, Jimmy. Andy. If, if, a, uh, if, if we have a project that's, that's bid and it comes in to the budget, uh, the first thing we talk about is, is, is trying to question of value engineering a project if it came in above or something like that sitting down with the apparent low bidder you uh, you people and maybe the question is, should be do we pay for that is the, do we pay for that time that you would sit down uh, with the contractor and value engineer it is that part of, of this services or what is, is, is Mm -hmm. but it just to? wasn't addressed in the contract, and I know that's something sure. that we were concerned about. How do you normally do it? If, if it's a again, if, if it's a if it's a project of size, a larger project, yeah. a small project, that's not that's not an issue. A larger project, let's say, it's a, in addition to the wastewater plant or the water plant, then there's a number of it's because of the complexity and the number of things, and we can sit down and discuss whether those are, are things that, particularly with staff, if, if there's a way that we can look if they want. One piece of equipment that's a higher value than a, let's say, a Cadillac versus a Chevrolet. Those are the kinds of things that are easy. Uh, so those would those would be just simple discussions. I don't think there's a, a large value in engineering fee for that. Uh, if we're if we're saying that we need to change direction with the project, uh, if it's over budget, then then I think that's a that's a that's a room for negotiation. But I, but again, I think that there's a uh, uh, because you guys do so many different projects. And I varies from one to one. Uh, if it's something that, that, again, if it's something that we feel like that our design is is, is out of out range or the scope, uh, typically a lot of our projects for you are linear projects, which means it's it's a water line of 5,000 feet. Uh, if uh, there's very little room to, to value engineer that. Uh, so then our, our work becomes how do we take that 5,000 
Would you be willing to include that in the contract? We can put language in the contract okay. to that. That would make me feel better. Um, the other thing that, that I think we need to do from our end is on the on-demand services that we need to, to do a request form from us. Um, whatever department's doing it so that we can get a feeling as a council um, how many requests we are making because I think right now we don't we don't know that and is there a way that we can can either change that avoid that are we asking questions that maybe we should know the answer to um, and I think that's a way for council to track that so that's really more from our end um, the other thing is that when we do an on-demand services are we always getting the one of the project managers it, uh, uh, you have oversight from that. <coughs> if you, if uh, what, uh, 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 when you say always getting a project manager, uh, because of because of the, the depth of our staff, if it's something that a technician can do, you're getting that technician because it, it's a lot, it's a lower rate. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. It's yes. the cost of the project manager. Yes. If another engineer can help us at a lower cost, that's what. Yes, ma'am. And that's what we try to do, and, and a lot of our services provided on site. With, we, we typically have someone in the field up here almost every day, so they're looking at it first, and then often can make a decision even by, by phone call back to the office. So well, that's your cost now. And I think we need to be documenting either emails or phone calls, Scott, whatever, if you can make a form, because I think that's something that we've never tracked, and so it might tell us what we need for a department head, it might tell us what we need for an engineer, it might tell us more information that we've, that we've had. Because I, I don't know how much we're utilizing you, but I think we need to know. When we had our, <clears throat> when, and during your presentation, um, I think we came up with an, idea, with an idea to work on that had to do with not only this task order, but an updating, and et cetera, that might uh, be on the computer uh, would be a program that maybe that you would design or something like that, that our people, uh, the town manager uh, or whoever he delegates, as well as the council that they were so interested, could access that information. And I'm thinking by project or something like that. Where are we on this project? How much money have we spent to date or something like that? Uh, and I think that would help in, in, the, in the communication, and it might also uh, help in, in the thing of, of typing letters or memos or mm -hmm. forms or things of, of that nature in, in, in the communication. Uh, I, I'm, I'm looking at the task form here. Yes. And if we could, I know we can't do it maybe <coughs> this year, or maybe you can, I don't know. But I'd like it to have, an understanding in a memorandum form or something that we agree that you're going to work towards developing that kind of some sort of a computer program that we can access so that we can communicate uh, better. I think it'll help you and help us and we don't have to write all those letters. It'll, you can pull all that up, you know, every month and it might help a little bit from your time as well. So that, that's, I, that's I just idea. wonder if we could make sure that we don't lose track of yes, sir. that. If, the, if you concur, if you and the town manager concur that that would be helpful. Okay? I just want to get on the record. I don't and have not and will never assign any blame to McGill engineers for over bids because that's a sign of the times, as you said, happening. And sometimes we just might have to say, well, it's just not the time to build this thing. I can wait a while. Because the times are good right now. Bidders are scarce. Great. Any other questions, comments? One more that, that's probably due to my lack of knowledge, but is the ownership of the documents always yours? There, there are instruments of service. You have those as, as a record. You typically get those as bills, and they're, they're, they're housed uh, here. Uh, Do we 
we have them. Those are even mailed okay. digitally at this point. Okay. All right. That answers mine. I think it's got uh, something similar maybe like what uh, Kevin puts in his report that we can get a little more detailed on the projects is ongoing, what's been, the work orders that's been asked. So. Yeah. I need to get that one. And Nicole always puts it, you know, where, where you are. You know, if they, if they say, if you look at a work order, it's going to schedule to be <coughs> three months from now. This is where we are in the first month. Here we are in the second. It's like following in construction a critical path schedule. Where are you along that schedule? And uh, whether you're on budget or over budget, and like Nicole does that for us, it's part of the deal, too. Good. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. your hard work. What's your pleasure? We would be approved. We approve it. Open motion and second. Further discussion? <coughs> Remember, say aye. 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 Opposed, vote no. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Look forward to it. Thanks. Okay, Winter Press Parade. Scott. Thank you, Mayor. Back in July, when Town Council approved the, the series of requested events from the Chamber of Commerce for 2017, uh, there was a Winter Press <coughs> Parade with a to be determined uh, beside it. Uh, that some of the details associated with that have been determined at this point. So the chamber has submitted a request outlining uh, a proposed date and time for a Winterfest parade. And that would, as proposed, would be Saturday, January 28, 2017. And looking to try out an early evening parade for this Winterfest parade to have the time at 5.30 p.m. Uh, at that stage, the winter lighting uh, in the downtown area will be in place. Uh, the thinking is that perhaps some of the floats may have some lights on it and it would provide a unique experience. And uh, the chamber is looking to increase the involvement and in our partnership with the town uh, as it relates to Appalachian State University and pursuing their involvement and celebrating that relationship. Um, so it would actually be branded the ASU Winterfest Parade. Uh, one of the questions associated with uh, the hosting of this parade is who would actually facilitate the uh, planning and registering of uh, attendees for the parade, and it could be accomplished one of two ways. Either town staff uh, could handle that, and we've taken a, a look at the amount of time estimated to uh, take care of that, and we wouldn't actually pay anything extra. The, the extra time spent on that Saturday uh, most of it would go through compensatory time where folks would take off time later. Uh, we've estimated the number of hours and it would take about four hours of time arriving two hours early, an hour for the parade and an hour for helping to, to clean up and make sure everybody gets on their way properly. Um, the total equivalent cost of us doing that is about $1,700. Um, part of the reason that's higher is because comp time would be on a Saturday after they've already worked a full week, so it would be earned at time and a half. Uh, alternatively, uh, that would be for Parks and Rec staff to take care of all of those duties. As proposed, uh, Town of Blowing Rock police officers, the Chamber has agreed to uh, pay our uh, police officers the off-duty rate and have them handle intersection closures and traffic management associated with that and pay those officers directly. That cost is estimated to be about $1,200. So uh, if, if the town does not uh, handle the registration and so forth, uh, the chamber is willing to take that on themselves alternatively. So uh, Charles is here if council has any questions about specifics related to that, or I'll be happy to try and answer any questions as well. Please. Well, so the question is whether we handle it or chamber, and is chamber right. willing to do the work? Are they, can they handle the parade? Because I'm in favor of that. We can. Okay. asking for 
fifty fifty on three thousand bucks? Is that what we're asking for? Um, the the chamber has agreed to pay the direct pay directly the police officers, so that's not really a function of, of the cost. Um, oh, okay. if, so if that's they, that's the twelve hundred. Right. Our our and equivalent our, parts and our, are and our portion of it is seventeen hundred? Right. Does that include registration? Is a register yes. is that on the spot? Well, the registration would occur in the time leading up to the parade, so there would be a cutoff point that Jennifer and Autumn would handle that registration process. So Jennifer would be contacting the people that or would, would y'all, Charles, as far as uh, actively pursuing people to be in the, the parade? Uh, we will. <laughs> July 4th. <laughs> uh, <laughs> go right through the snow. That would make it perfect. We're planning to try to get a snow plow in front of the yeah, good the thing. Thing. Oh. Dream on. <laughs> it could be colder than a mother in law's love. That yep. night. I remember one time it got canceled. I was right there. It's, uh, <laughs> and that's cold. There was so much snow that day. <laughs> Okay, sounds fun. Maybe we'll win another bowl game. That's the point. Yeah, that's super. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I, we need to vote. We need to vote. Yeah, I don't have a problem sharing. We be with the Panthers. Yeah. We got a new. We got a motion. Wow. What'd you say? I, I could be approved. Second. Be approved. Okay. Who's going to discussion? Who's going to be a discussion? For running that. Chamber. People in charge of Charles and Jennifer, they run it <coughs> anyway. But they're talking to what you approved, though. I mean, uh, the motion is they'll take care of the law enforcement, like what was stated okay, here, yeah. and then we'll take care of the other logistics. Is that what you're talking about? Well, the law, law enforcement's separate. Yeah. They'll pay them right. directly. They're going right. to pay them directly. Right. What you want to do? So the motion is that town parks and rec staff would handle the registration at the day of, of the, the overtime. Right. 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 For our for for uh, town's personnel. That's what that's what we're voting on. Yeah. Right. As well as the five thirty time. Five thirty time, yes. The time. Is everybody clear? Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Those vote no. Motion carries. Do we have any speakers from the Y'all go have a nice evening. Thank you for being That's here. It. That's it. That's it. Is that all there is?